Ben Tracy is joining us now from Beijing. Ben, this is the second time in two weeks that Japan has been warned of a missile test. How is the region reacting to this latest test? Certainly not sitting well with the Japanese. I mean, not only has North Korea now sent two missiles flying over Japan, it's also said just in the last day that uh, Japan should be sunken in the sea and that there's no reason for Japan to exist next to North Korea anymore. So when you couple the missile tests with the threats, it's not a very good situation for the Japanese. But it's interesting, if you take a step back and you look at the map, what North Korea is trying to do is to show how far their missiles can go. And they don't have a lot of options in terms of where they can launch those. They have to launch basically to the east. If they go to the west, it's China, it's too close, and they're not going to risk launching a missile towards China. If they go to the south, they're aiming at South Korea and Guam, and right now with the U.S., that's not where they want to aim. So when you think about it, they are taking the least provocative action they can of a very provocative action by launching it over Japan, launching it over the northernmost port, uh, part of Japan, which is the least populous part of the island. Obviously very provocative for Japan, but if you look at all the options on the table, if this is what North Korea wants to do, they're trying to find the avenue that elicits the least uh, response. Ben, uh, you mentioned the distance. Does this give us any real sense of what uh, North Korea's missile capability is at this point? Any more insight to what their, uh, their capabilities are at this point? It certainly seems they're trying to show how far their missiles can go. This is a missile that they have launched before. It's called the Hawsong-12. It's one of their intermediate range ballistic missiles. Uh, but this is the furthest they've ever launched a missile. And there doesn't seem, there's, it, it's not a coincidence that they launched this thing the distance they did. It's almost exactly the distance that a missile would have to travel from Pyongyang to hit Guam. So there is speculation that Kim Jong-un is basically trying to show that he could make good on his threat to hit Guam if that's what he wanted to do. But the North Koreans, every time they do one of these tests, it's not just lobbing a missile up in the air to say, hey, we have missiles. They really are testing the capabilities that they have, whether it's the atmospheric reentry of their missile, whether it's the range of the missile, or just a new kind of missile, which they obviously did twice this summer with their intercontinental ballistic missiles. Uh, ben, you mentioned that of course, in Japan, they're pretty unhappy about this. South Korea responded with a simulated strike on the north. But what about the wider community, the international community? I know the U.N. is having an emergency meeting, but what's the reaction been so far? You know, this starts to feel like Groundhog Day a bit with these missile launches. You have a launch by uh, North Korea. You have some sort of military response from South Korea. You have Japan say, we condemn this in the strongest possible terms. And then within a couple of hours, you have the U.N. saying, let's have an emergency meeting. And then the U.S. pushes for more sanctions. Sometimes the sanctions go into place, and then North Korea just does it again. So I think the question here is, at what point do you break this cycle? Is there something that can be done to get North Korea to talk? But it appears at this point that North Korea doesn't really want to talk. They want to keep building their capability to the point where they have what they view as the ultimate deterrent, which is a nuclear weapon capable of hitting the United States. Then they'll talk because then they feel like they're talking from a position of strength and as an equal with the United States. Yeah, one more uh, step in that ground, ground, Groundhog Day uh, narrative is the call for China and Russia to place more pressure on North Korea. Every time we hear that, nothing really seems to be happening. Uh, ben Tracy in Beijing, thanks a lot.